YouTube, my name's Lance and welcome to Bundy Bear's Shed. Well, a weather report. The daytime temperatures are uh, 25 down to 23 a couple of days and um, we actually got into um, single figures, 9 degrees yesterday morning and look, it was something similar this morning. So uh, we're all running around rugged up, we've got long pants on and boots and all that, having a bit of a soup because it's cold. <laughs> So you fellas down there in your minus twos and threes and that, well, yeah, you will be thinking we're a bloody mob of soft bastards up here. But anyway, um, that's just how we how we like it. This is, um, we're coming into the coldest part of winter and I believe they've had a bit of snow down south, down at, um, or down New South Wales on the, on the ski resorts and places like that. So um, we're getting a bit of the old... Um, mother-in-law's breath coming up off of that, yeah, you know, that cold chill down the back of your neck. <laughs> but anyway, um, it's still lovely, beautiful sunny day, lovely and clear here, and um, yeah, why, why would you be anywhere else? But um, the old fella, he's, he's still going good. Um, he, he went for a walk with his walking stick instead of his walker the other day and fell over, but um, I reckon Mum would have chewed his ear. He bloody he'll have a sore ear if I go up there, really. And, and, um, but yeah, he's all good, no harm done. And um, yeah, but he'll, he'll have, just have to take his walker for a little while yet. So, well, I think the um, the mind is willing, but the body's letting him down. He'd like to get out in the garden. He's you know, ever since a kid, I can always remember him having a big veggie garden and um, veggies and fruit trees. That's just been his his interest for many many years. And, they're in a retirement home now and they've got a big back veranda and he's got polystyrene boxes with veggies and they've let him have a bit of garden right at the back of the house there that he can scratch along in so um and there's a couple of common fruit trees he fusses over so yeah look um he'll be out and about in no time so i'd, I'd say these beautiful sunny days he'd, he'd be really sick of sitting around and um yeah he'd be looking to go for a bit of a poke around outside so so i, I think i'll be the same but um, but anyway He's um, all going good. Oh, the Queensland tractor spares through the week. We finally found a, a new spare parts person. Um, we have someone starting this week, this coming week. Um, so that's good. He's a tradesman auto electrician that um, had a bit of a... Um, uh, he used to work up on drilling rigs and that and he had a, a bit of a knee problem. So they opened up his knee and and they've had a couple of attempts at it and they've buggered it all up on him. So um, so he's been three years out of work. So he's tickled pink to have a job. And um, we're bloody pleased to have him because um, me being a diesel fitter, Ross being a farmer, he was a cane farm that we offered a job to and trained him up. And then now Chris being an auto electrician, um, we're getting a bit of a broad spectrum in there for um, different parts and bits and pieces like anything anything electrical well we can just throw Chris at him and there'll be no arguing so <laughs> well that, that's in theory anyway but um so that's good um have someone else on board so it'll take the load off my, myself and Judy a bit and um Judy will probably drop back a day a week now to um back to three days a week and um bloody spoiler don't I really and um but anyway I suppose after 20 years with no annual leave no holidays <laughs> you get to a time in your life where hopefully you can kick back a bit so, um, so we'll see how that goes I think it'll be great well the postie stopped on again today or this week and um, only a couple of little things um, that were old orders that I was waiting to come in I don't think I've bought anything new and um, look, all we all we picked up this week was a, a set of edge finders and um I had a couple here and do you think I can find them? I have no idea what I've done with them. And so we you know, we have just a solid solid tumbler half inch one. Um, this is half inch with 200 thou on this end and, and the point here. And that 200 thou, boy that's close to five millimetres. There you go. Um, a, a larger diameter one here, a half inch, it goes both ends. and. A smaller one just with a 200 thou nozzle. I'll have to lube it up a bit. And another one with a hole finder and a edge finder there. So, 
so that's a good bit of gear. Um, I just don't know what I've done with the other ones. <laughs> Who knows what happens in Bundy Bear's shed. But um, yeah, I've, I've looked at all the places. Yeah, you, you'll know yourself in your shed. You have little habits where you just sit this here and just sit that there. So, um, so I've done. I've, I've sat it somewhere, but I, I've looked and looked and can't find them. So um, we've bought another tractor, um, possibly two. I've do definitely done the deal on one. Um, it's a diesel TE20 that's um, a bit of a basket case, so I should be able to show that to you next week. And um, with Sparex here on board with the parts, um, we're going to just chug along with the two tractors. Um, we are going to do the 48 to start with, and um, once we've got that up to a certain level, well, to keep the video content rolling, we'll, we'll try and pop a diesel into it, because things are different on the diesel, so, so that'll be interesting too. Um, the um, the diesel T20 it it got parked where where we picked it up from out of the shed. It's got no back tyres left on it. It's a it's a ruppy, but um, it got parked there 15 years ago. We could speak to the man that drove it there, and he was working for this fellow that died. He got killed on his farm, and and um, this fellow was working for him, and they blew a back tyre on it, and um, the Father at the time said no, he wasn't spending any more money on the tractor, as in tyres. He, he thought the tyres, to put a pair of tyres on the back was worth more than the tractor, which he was probably right. So, so they drove it into the shed 15 years ago. It's been undercover all the time. They pinched the fuel lift pump off it for another job that it fitted. But um, so apart from no back tyres and no fuel lift pump, it's a beauty. So we're sending a, a tilt tray truck out there this coming week to, to grab that and. Um, we're actually negotiating with another tractor, but I, I can't say much about that yet until the deal comes off. Um, and it'll be a lot of content in that. Um, it, it, if it comes off, it needs a complete engine rebuild and everything else is okay. Um, engine rebuild and probably a paint. So. so anyway, we'll see how that goes. That's an interesting bit of, bit of gear coming up. Um, I got approached a couple of weeks ago by Banggood. Now, what have I done with that? Here we go. By Banggood. And they've obviously been snooping around and looking at a few YouTube channels and, and offering them a little bit of gear to have a look at um, and do a review on. Um, and they actually give you some software, a link to put on your YouTube, um, on your YouTube review. So, um, Bang Good, they're they're a Chinese company, and I have bought stuff off them, and no trouble at all. I've, the dealings with them have been good. I don't know whether that's how they got on to me or not. Um, but anyway, Jason in Australia. There's probably Jason everywhere, who knows. But um, Jason in Australia um, sent me an email and said, would you be interested in reviewing a couple of things for Banggood on your channel as a bit of advertising for them, you know, to get the exposure out there. And I said, well, okay. Um, what do they have in mind? So they said, just have a quick look through here and pick a couple of items that you think you might be interested in and um, uh, we'll have a look. He said, pick a heap of them and we'll just see what's around. And so... I did that, I gave them a list of knickknacks and they come back with a couple of things and he said make a long list and I said no, <laughs> that's my short list, I said I'll um, um, let's just see how we get on first, yeah you don't want to go jumping in balls and all and um, into some of these deals and wish you never saw them so I said no well how about we just start off nice and steady and if you want me to have a look at something I can but um, I also want the opportunity to be honest about it. If you send me shit, um, I'll, I want to say it, and it'll probably be the end of it. So, um, so anyway, they what they come back with. I, I had a look, and and they had some tool holders, 250-201, which is your BXA, I believe. And I'd always been, I've always had a thing for tool holders. I must have 20 or more now, and. Um, so they said, look, we'll send you a tool holder and 
see how it goes. You know, see how it goes with your other tool holders and, and check it out. So, so it turned up through the week and look, it's, it's compared to the ones I've been buying, um, look, it's great. It, it, there's no, um, no definite great improvement in the, um, in the finish or anything like that, but I've had my little engineer's square out here and I've checked for squareness and um, I've checked for squareness on the bottom here and all, all through here and it's going great so um, I can't find a problem with it but um, sounds like my neighbour's coming over so looks like I'll probably be back in a minute well back again grumpy Dave the neighbour come over for a visit the, um, he's got a Polaris 325 and he was telling me the other day he was going along and um, and well, well those, those bikes, when you put them into reverse, they drop the revs back and instead of just running smooth, they sort of go burp, 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 and run roughly in reverse to take the speed out of it so you can't go too quickly. So he was coming along the road there up to my driveway and, and all of a sudden it looked, it looked like it was going crook and the, um, the reverse light was coming on. And so he's telling me through the week, oh, my big gearbox is buggered and this is buggered and that's buggered and I, I didn't. Go and have a look. I, you know, sometimes I just choose not to. And um, and anyway, his um, his lad got on the bike and, and he gets up stuff. He's you know, he's a good bloke, but he um, he, he wrings its neck, and he took it for a lap and wrung its neck, <laughs> bloody into it, and it hadn't played up since. So, but um, I'm talking to him now. It wasn't that actually it went into reverse like he was telling me originally that it had a bucket gearbox. Um, it was just it would drop revs and go burp, 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 like in reverse and the light would come on saying it was in reverse but the, it never actually went backwards so um, so he's had a few ants getting up on it so it sounds like an electrical problem but, but anyway not to worry um, he's off and racing again so, <laughs> so that's a good thing but um, but yeah look with back to Banggood and their and their tool holders here um, uh, I've done a bit of a, a bit of a run with it and um, I've tested it, I've sat it in the tool post holder like we, this is the newest, the brand new tool post holder we have and I've done a run and checked the gap down here in comparison to the Hare and Forbes one and it's actually a little bit better than the Hare and Forbes one, this one with the gap, it pulls in nice and tight the screws are good I've checked all the, uh, I've used my square and I've, I've checked all the surfaces to make sure they're true to this back surface here and it's great I, I can't fold it and um, and I suppose why would you um, it seems to be going good and I, I think it'll be a great thing and another part that they sent me was this air sander now that's a 19 millimeter or 20 mil belt on the air sander and I've just loosened the screw underneath here and on this sander you can actually drop it down at 90 or bring it up and tighten that screw once more to get in the, um, get in the tight areas. Now, the reason I looked at that was because on my grey Fergie over there, where the top link bracket goes in, you can't even get a wire brush in there. You, know, you put a 70mm wire brush or 75mm on your angle grind and try and get in there, it's a pain in the ring to get in there. So I thought, well, that'd be okay for that. And... Now I've um, got the Arbor Press off here in Forbes over there. I, I thought I'd have a look at doing that and putting it together and just just tidying it up as I went because some of the castings are a bit rough. But on the top of the casting where the main uh, main rod goes through, one side's higher than the other, and it won't fit in my milling machine. And that's so I'm going to actually sit up with this sander and just dress the top of it and try and even them both up. So. I'll do that as a bit of a run just to um, just to use the tool and, and do a bit of a test run on it for Banggood and, and see how they go but um, there'll be a link down in the description of this video and if I do another one and use it um, there'll be a link to the site where you can buy it I think that's $63 Australian something like that so we'll see how that goes and um, yeah Banggood I, I noticed some um, Pierre the other day 
um, was approached by Bang Good and he did a test on a couple of lathe tools. Um, I know Chris Old Man Shop has been testing some Bang Good tools. Whether they've approached him or not, I don't know. Um, and they all seem to be going well, but it, it's a good site. Their, um, their, their motto is um, best bang for your buck, bang good. So um, there's obviously some Australian or some English speaking content in there to come up with a logo like that, not um, not we work you for a few good time or something. <laughs> so you know, we'll see how we go with all that. And I got on to assembling the Arbor Press, the, the Heron Forbes Arbor Press. And, um, well, <laughs> I know they're cheap, but um, some of the housing, the, the main housing where this, where this rack goes, which is your main plunger, um, it's higher one side by a couple of millimetres than the other. Where it's, and it's just a casting, must have slipped in the mould or something like that. But, um, I've, I've had a good look at the rack here, the main rack. And look, it's okay with, um, it's reasonably square and everything, but there's a burr there and it's been cut off just with a um, band saw. So we still have the sawn finish on the end at both ends. And so I think I might chuck it in the lathe and true those ends up because when you're actually pressing down, with something, you want a nice flat surface there. And another thing I'm going to do, and, and this is just for myself, is I'm going to the bottom, say inch, inch and a quarter, I'm going to turn this round. And the reason I'm going to turn it round is I can turn it round, put a little groove in there, then I can make a few adapters up. You know, I can make a um, like a five eight round adapter or a, a twenty mil round adapter or um, I, I, on, on the round piece here I could actually put a, a piece of flat for using it as a folder or something like that. So, so one end I'm going to make round so I can make adapters. So that'll work okay. The gear that comes with it, or the pinion, um, it's a big heavy lump of stuff. Um, they've chrome plated it, so I don't know how long that'll last, but the gears have been knocked around a bit. There's a few burrs. Um, I don't know if you can see a few burrs in here that we're going to we're going to deburr all that before we use it. And on the end of the handle here, they actually have a a little screw like that, so you can actually screw it in and stop the handle from sliding through or sliding out. Um, look, I'm not fussed on all these screws hanging out of things, so. What I think I will do there in the assembly process is pop it in the mill. We'll drill down through this thread and get rid of it. We'll drill down into here. We'll put a spring in there and a ball bearing, and the ball bearing will hold um, hold pressure on that on the handle to stop it moving around. And I may even put the handle in the mill and put a couple of detents so there's one right in the middle and one on each end so you can just pull it out till it locks and then you can you know you're right or you can push it back the other way so um, so I think I'll do that instead of having these these screws and things hanging around because um, yeah that's I, don't know, I, just don't, I just don't like that so we'll, we'll change that in the process so there'll, there'll probably be a, a, a video on its own of doing the work on the armor press and Another thing I'm not that fussed on is this front plate. Now, this front plate sits in the front, bolts on by four bolts, and it holds this rack in place. Now, what they do is have four bolts here that go through into the housing, and then there's two screws here that push on this rusty bit of mild steel and that rusty bit of mild steel is meant to give you a wearing surface on the back of this gear and I thought like, well that's pretty rubbish isn't it so what we're going to do I've got a piece of brass bar here and I'm going to machine a bit of that out and we're 
we're going to put a brass rubbing block there. Um, where it actually had the adjustment here, it had two long screws with lock nuts on them sticking out the front again. Um, I'm going to get rid of those and put Allen head screws so there's no bolts sticking out the front here. Um, where the bolt holes are here, it's just up on a rough cast surface and it is quite rough. So I'm going to sit it in the mill and just fly cut across the top there and get myself a nice smooth surface for the mounting bolts to settle into. And also on the side, you've got a yoke here and on the side there's two bolts holding tension across on this gear too to stop it moving. Um, I might just pop a couple of allen head screws there and there's quite a thick housing there so I might just put a couple of little brass buttons in and then use an allen screw just to keep a little bit of pressure to stop it wobbling around. It's a pretty good fit though. Another thing we have to do to it is if you can see yeah, see that line coming down there? Well, when you actually have a look through there, there's actually quite a bit of gap. And so they've actually, th th there's a big deep, what's this? I don't know if I can get it there so you can see it properly. It's hard to get the light there, but you can actually see the difference here and there. And, Look, that's probably 20 thou, that gap there. And so, yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to take an average of this housing here, sit it up, fly cut this, and then tip it over, fly cut this surface and smooth him out. Now, where this little piece of junk here sat in there as a rubbing surface, that's rough as anything in here. So while we got it in the mill, we're going to open this up a little bit and like square the corners out and give it a nice smooth surface to sit on in there and we'll probably open it up to take this piece of brass the full width um, well I'll actually have to check that but we may we may drop this down so it's just the width of this here or we may even machine down each side so it can still sit out the back here but we have a little protrusion a little high spot in here to um, to push on here you don't need it you just want to take the slop out really and look on a press sometimes a little bit of movement there doesn't hurt at all it, it helps everything line up so so we'll see how that goes um, that's a that's a job coming up um, maybe this weekend we'll see how we go I've got a Heap of tractor parts here now, so there's, there's little T20 video is going to be coming out this weekend. Um, I've got a, I've got quite a few bits from Sparex now, and I've got quite a few jobs to do. So we're going to, um, going to attack that over the next couple of days and see how we go. Um, there's another job on the lathe, and on the lathe I'll, I'll take the camera over shortly and we'll zoom in a little bit. You can see where the tail stock is and all here, and. Oh, a little DTI, but this surface here, that's I have holes in a piece of angle line that just sits over the back, and on that surface there, that's where I just drop um, drop my MT3 chucks and things like that. But I've only got four holes in it, so I'm going to have to put more holes. And on a normal run of the mill, I've started pulling the stuff off it before, a bit premature, and few grubby looking things. <laughs> I usually have two or three tool holders that I'm using sitting up there and so if I need to do a change out I can just just grab one do a swap and pop it back on this little shelf here so um, so we're going to lose a little bit of that space but I do have a, a plan coming up for doing a, a nice bracket to hold all my quick change tool post holders but down at the other end here I'll take this fellow out of the way down at the other end here, I have some holes for my lathe chucks, and I've only got two, but now with the 5C collet I've got extras. That's a that's an extra one I picked up with a bigger chuck I bought, and then I have the other one for the 5C. So we're going to try and do another little staggered run of them. And what normally sits in the other end here 
are just a couple of cheap micrometers. These aren't my good good ones. These are just the these are just the, the ones I have on the lathe that are get knocked around a little bit. So they usually just sit. They usually just sit down the holes there. So I've always got micrometers ready for when I just want to measure something up, and they're accurate as anything. Those dodgy looking things, and um, so what I'm going to do is, is take this off, pull all the stuff out of it. We're going to drill a few more holes in here. Um, I've got a, I've got like a, a tap follower here. This, this part's good. This bit's junk. So I plan on making a new one of them. A bit of a project. So we, we've got to make room for a few more bits and pieces there. This chuck here goes in there too. And so we're just going to work on that a little bit and drill some more holes and on the end here. That's where the spanners go when I can find them all. That's where the spanners go for the um, quick change tool post and anything else on the lathe. So, so yeah, a little project there. I'm just um, I'm getting getting a bit balls up with all the stuff here, all the rubbish, and um, I think I'll put a few hours, oh yeah, put a little while into that, and bring it up to scratch once more. I've just taken all the stuff out and that's all it is on the back there. Yep, yeah, you can see that. It just hooks over, hooks over the lip here, and the piece of steel through here that just keeps it sitting at the right angle. So I have to drill a couple of holes here, a couple more holes here. We'll have less room for tool holders, but that's all right. We're going to do something with that. And all the stuff has to go somewhere temporarily. <laughs> There's the handle of the broom. You don't really need to look at the handle of the broom. But um, this is a little gaze tester. But um, yeah, it just sits there. Out of the way, all jumbled up until I get sorted out. Another thing you might notice is when we have the tools in the holder here, the back ones are up high and the front ones drop down low. And we've done that just so it's easier to see what you have there. But the way we've done that is that the hole at the back is three quarter inch and the hole at the front is one inch. So we usually put the fatter things down the bottom at the front out of the way because I haven't got to worry about hitting the back and the skinnier ones they just go back through here so yeah I just thought that might be interesting for you Start of some holes. I 
Now I think I'll need to slow the drill press down a bit to do the bigger holes, so I'll do that and come back. Okay, we've slowed the drill down. Just up to the task. Okay, we'll go and sit her over up over there, or sit it up over in there and do a test run. Well, look at that. Hey, pretty exciting looking, isn't it, really? <laughs> Let me little turn that off. A little DRO I must have put on. But yeah, we have plenty of space now. We still have room for a few tools, or a few tool holders. And we've got all our all our chucks and bits and pieces up here out of the road. It's not in harm's way. The the tail stocks or the chuck, I mean, is way down this end. So we're very rarely up this end. So there you go, job done. Tick one off for Lance. Well, there you go. That's it for the week. Um, yeah, we've just finished off the tool hold, and that's a nice little job. I'm going to paint it yet, where I've drilled the holes through, I don't want to leave them bare metal. Um, I'll paint that and put a bit of, I might have a bit of Fergie Grey from Sparex on there, something like that. I'll, um, I'll tidy it all up and give it, a, give it a nice tidy up. But that's, um, that's a little problem that I've had on my lathe for some time. I do hope to make a, a tool post holder 
coming up. I'm thinking of a couple of bits of angle iron out for you know on a on a board or something. I haven't made my mind up. I have been looking at YouTube, see what others are doing, and there's some good ideas out there. So I'll probably nick some. <laughs> That's what YouTube's for. If you ever want to know how to do anything, just YouTube it. But, um, but look, that's all we have for you this week. Um, thanks for watching. Um, please leave a comment down the bottom. Like and subscribe. Watch an ad or two for me. Um, that helps pay the bills. <laughs> we'll catch you later, eh?